Welcome to this. Uh, we are having a one shot, which is uh, starring uh, Kate, who uh, won a giveaway. And Hello. it's going to be a whole lot of fun. We're going to experience some things together. We're playing at level 11. Um, I don't think any of us have played at high level yet, so there's going to be. Uh, we're going to be pretty squirrely on how all these spells work, and so that's going to happen, and we're all just going to enjoy it together. Um, but other than that, uh, it's going to be a fun night. Uh, so what i like to start off with is uh, it just real quickly introducing everyone's characters. If uh, you all could just give a real brief kind of um, explanation of uh, who your character is, and uh, then we'll get started. Uh, we'll start from uh, left to right with Schnicky McSchnickerson. Hello there, I'm Schnicky McSchnickerson, a uh, deep known arching trickster. Uh, my family's been sneaking in uh, places for generations, and after one, one ancestor wasn't as sneaky as he should have been, he got apprehended by the guards, and a family silence spoke. But to use for the greater good, shall we say. And now I'm playing it, you know, adventuring, uh, helping out with the one when you act at the call, and I gather that's what's brought me here today. Awesome, thank you, Snakey. And can you load the uh, music on him? Thanks. Uh, next we've got Ecta. That's me. Um, I'm playing Ecta. A uh, half orc bard. My twin sister is over there, Lindsay. Uh, we are twins that are separated around the age of 12 because of a tsunami. And uh, it didn't really work out how we found each other. <laughs> but we, we eventually found each other. Um, Ecta is a bit of a mesh, she likes her wine. She plays the war gong, and she treats everyone she loves like puppy dogs. Uh -huh. <laughs> Alright, next we have to the captain. Okay, I will be playing Captain Virgil Breezewin, um, but he basically insists that everyone he meets calls him the captain. Uh, he's a bit older, a bit rough around the edges. Um, he uh, is not really too keen on keeping himself looking nice, but uh, he has a very, very high, powerful personality, let's say. Um, he tends to go off on tangents about, you know, the good old days and all of his adventures that probably most likely didn't happen. Um, and he's very, very keen on letting everyone know how great he is. Awesome. Alright, uh, next we have Cabal. Oh, and for the record, sorry, he's a, a tiefling paladin, so... <laughs> There's also those, those, those mechanical things there, too. So as you can see, Kamal's background is intense. And I definitely have wrote so much for it. <laughs> Kamal is a fighter. She, like Steph said... Oh shoot, I should probably change my name in here. <laughs> She and Ecto were twins, they got separated by a tsunami, and then, um, Kavath ended up with her dad? Right? Uh, anyway, she yeah, ended up I with the dad, you with mom. Okay, I ended up with my mom, and I was always the runt out of me and Ecta, and so she always protected me as a child, and we were separated, and I had to be the only thing that my mom had. I decided to be super tough and awesome! Woo! Oh. I became a fighter. Um, and by also, the way... Oh. The stream is it's having some serious audio issues. Yeah, we're, we're working on them as we speak. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, just so listened then, in and it was pretty bad. Yeah, it is pretty bad. Yeah, but so then the horrible things story. happened, and now I'm really traumatized and scarred. The end. Alright, and uh, lastly, but certainly not leastly, we have Callista. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right. Is there anything you wanted to share about Callista? Uh, she is a 
is a real sarcastic little thing, but <laughs> um, she is a uh, <clears throat> she's a uh, tiefling warlock, and she's a, like I said, she's a really sarcastic little thing. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, awesome. Then, uh, so we'll go ahead and start now, uh, with a little bit of description, just so you know, uh, you all are in the, uh, city of Belfort, which is a city in northwest Malaysia. Uh, it's morning, and you can hear the morning bells ringing out over the city, uh, the air is crisp, and it carries the scent of candied apples and roasted popcorn through the streets as you make your way to the center of the city. Uh, there's a few children that run past you laughing as they wave the uh, Rajali flags and clutch partially eaten treats and tight little fists. Uh, but this isn't your first time you've been in the city. Several years ago, you and your friends came together and slew the dragon Kalstrad, a terrible creature that had been ravaging the lowlands. But uh, since then, you and uh, your party have kind of enjoyed a sort of celebrity here in this uh, city. Uh, but you've come here, you've arrived here on the invitation of Prince Isaac for his birthday celebration as his guest of honor. And uh, though you as individuals, you don't really care that much for these sorts of events, uh, you've had a kind of a history with Prince Isaac uh, fighting alongside him against the Red Root Horde. Uh, and with that kind of uh, history, it was enough to convince you to make up an appearance. And this is uh, Prince Isaac. Um, let's see. But before long, you reach the city square. Actually, did I show that to everybody? You might not even see that. I have to show that to everybody first. Hey, what was the dragon's name again? Volstrad. Volstrad? With a K. Ah, uh, yes. I remember it well. Yes. <laughs> the day that I single-handedly led my group to slay the dragon. It was good. It was good. You were all there. It was Perfect. Like... Yeah, it was very fun to watch from the sidelines, doing nothing. I just had my war gong. Bang. <laughs> uh, before long, uh, as you all are walking towards the center of the city, uh, you reach the city square and... Uh, though it's really early in the morning, it's already bustling with activity. Uh, there's sounds of laughter and singing filling the streets as the people of Rajal enjoy the festival. Uh, towering over the colorful sea of tents that are hawking all sorts of wares, like, uh, like treats and jewelry and knickknacks, uh, towering over these all is the uh, giant statue of Tiraban which is uh, kind of a patron saint for the city. It's said to be an ancient ancestor of the royal line of Prince Isaac himself. Uh, and her great spear is pointing out towards the sea. But uh, as you enter into the crowd, uh, within moments, there you see the crowd kind of part in front of you. And there is a small cadre of uh, golden armored soldiers with white crested helms approaching you. And uh, in the center, you see the uh, warm smile uh, and familiar face of Prince Oscar. It's like, oh, welcome, one and all. It's good to see you all again. Uh, please enjoy yourselves. Hi, Hi how's, how are you? It's been a long time. Uh, it's, been, it's been quite a long time, but, uh, you know, we're very important, so we've been... Indeed you are, absolutely. Getting up into all sorts of trouble, no doubt. Um, but please, enjoy yourselves while you're here. I, I, I must uh, move onwards. I have a speech to prepare for this uh, lunchtime. But um, please, if you have any need at all, we have some attendants here that can bring you any sorts of types of drinks, uh, wine or alcohol, anything <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anything you need. But um, it, it truly yeah. is good to see you all. Yes, absolutely. Uh, some wine for my friend Ector here. Hector, and really, starting so early. It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> and indeed it is. <laughs> but uh, pretty quickly, a, a small scrawny uh, attendant kind of with a, with his uh, dark hair bowl cut approaches you, Ecta, with this big goblet. And it, Hi, you are. 
Hope you didn't spill any on the way. Thank you. Have fun! Prince Isaac, have I ever told you that you remind me of someone I've seen recently? Um, no. Because we haven't seen each other recently. That would be quite a feat. But, no, I mean, you remind me of someone else I've seen recently. Oh, is that true? Well, yes. I well, can't quite put my finger on it. He, he's some sort of captain of a ship of some, some kind. I'm... I don't know, I thought he was like a pilot or something. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the same thing, really. I do have that sort of mm, roguish air about me. Yeah, you know, it's it's awakening some memories of mine. Yeah. Very well, forceful I don't, I don't, memory. Yeah, well, yes, that's true. <laughs> Beat me to the punch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And with that, he, he wait, pauses for a moment. He's, well... That's a wonderful story. I'll be going now, but I'll talk to you very soon, I'm sure. And he makes his way off into the crowd. Uh, but uh, you are now alone in the crowd uh, around you. There's people uh, bustling around. There's some game tents. There's net, like, if you wanted to buy something, whatever you like to do. In a completely packed, crowded ballroom, we still feel utterly alone. So <laughs> powerful. Wow. Touching. Wow. Speak for yourself, I'm sure Ecto's fine. <laughs> I had a great time already! <laughs> uh, well, um, in, this, in this part of Elysia, especially in Rijal, they do have a breakfast wine. So, this is not out of the ordinary for this culture. <laughs> breakfast wine! Breakfast wine! Fun. Would anyone like to do anything? Um, yeah. <clears throat> the captain would like to dance. If there's dancing. Oh, look at me! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, well, you can look for dancing. You do hear some music coming uh, closer to the center of the city, like, nearer the, to the statue. Okay. Um, you know, in an act of brotherly love, um, Captain's gonna grab Callista's hand and just start walking. <laughs> what? Hey! No! No, nah, he's literally dragging at this point. He's just got her by the hand, and he's heading towards the music, and he's like, Oh, I haven't danced in so long. This is going to be wonderful. Calista, do you want to uh, contest that? We can sure. Do... All right, then uh, both of you roll your choice of athletics or acrobatics. Oh, such a good start. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, then. <laughs> Let the captain take the lead here. Um... <laughs> Athletics or acrobatics. It's funny, I have I have uh, proficiency in athletics and I don't in acrobatics, so they have the same thing. Oh, wow. right. well, whatever yeah. you feel comfortable with, then. That. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, Callista, your choice of acrobatics or uh, athletics. To see if the captain can guide you to the music. It's going. S well, give me a. S eh. It's going a little slow. Yeah. Yeah, roll twenty can do that. Yeah. It can be a little taxing at times. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't surprise me if my laptop crashes at some point. It does that when I'm also in Twitch. Okay. Um, let's see. Is the is the chat window working for you? And if the sheet isn't, because we could do just a straight one d twenty plus two for. Looks like you have a plus uh, two to either. Yeah, and it's like totally frozen. I might have to pop out and pop back. Okay. Cool. Then we'll resolve that when you come back. Uh, Sneaker Mix Sneakerson, Actor Kavoff. Is there anything that you would like to do at this moment? So, just to clarify, we're, we're in a ballroom. I was trying to check audio stuff, so we're <laughs> in a ballroom. It's a big, fancy shindig, or...? It's a, it's a courtyard in the middle okay. of the city, I guess. Alright. Uh, first off, I'm restraining myself from trying to pickpocket. I'm trying to keep it on the straight and narrow, for now at least. Um, I'll go see if there's any, you know, uh, hot foods being served. Haven't oh. had my breakfast yet. 
Sure. Uh, what's what kind of food is your favorite? I mean, they do have uh, they, they're roasting currently turkey legs at the moment, but I, they're probably not ready yet. Um, you could probably get uh, fresh bread or uh, some cheeses in the morning. Oh, I'll get some bread and cheese and then go just wait and stare at the turkey legs. All right. So you find a uh, a, a baker who and minus two uh, this this small lady who sells artisanal cheeses and uh, they actually recognize you on site. You uh, deep gnomes are very uncommon in this area and uh, your particular mug is familiar to them and uh, you actually. The, the, the baker charges you, but you do get free cheese. <laughs> nice. um, and the turkey's lo legs look delicious. So, there's that. Uh, Ecta, are you good with your wine? Is there anything else you'd like to do with that? Boss, did you want to go look at something, sister? Well, I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, if we're here, we could go, we could go look at the games. So there's anything fun to ah, do? games. Yes. Let's oh, go play okay. some games. All right. Okay. Cool. So you go to this uh, this section of booths. You see a lot of the different games. You see uh, what looks like a test of strength that involves a uh, mallet and a large, it's, it's like two <coughs> with a uh, bell at the top. Um, you also see some, this uh, kind of shady looking guy with several cups who's moving them around really quickly and uh, taking money from people. And you also see a game that uh, people are throwing old bean bags through a hoop. Old bean bags. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd like to uh, try out this uh, hammer and bell. Kind of sounds oh. like my gong. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> so you approach and there's an old dwarf who's like, Oh, you want to test your strength, little one? Little one? Uh, it's a figure of speech, I suppose. Um, certainly, Sorry. sir. How, how much... How much shall I pay you to test my strength? Well, just just a cop, like five copper pieces is all it takes to get give a swing. Five copper, alright. I suppose I could swing that. Hey, Ecta, wait, ask the man if that's a prize. It's, sir, is there a prize? <laughs> Uh, we have lots of different kinds of uh, stuffed animals over here. Um, see, we've got uh, snakes and uh, pandas and uh, red pandas. Those are my favorite, personally. <laughs> um, we also got a bunch of little uh, puck dogs, and um, then there's also uh, puck How about cats. frogs? Uh, we don't deal in frogs here. <laughs> Just thought I'd ask. <clears throat> All right, um, here is uh, your five copper. Take a swing at this. Oh, thank you. All right, uh, give me a strength check. All right. Don't screw it up, little sister. Who you calling little? <laughs> All right. Bong. So. <laughs> ba -ba 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 um. Let's see. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Perfect. So, you reach back to your hammer, bring it down with all your might on this pad in the center, and this uh piece of metal flies up the cylinder. It do almost looks for a second like it's not going to make the top of the inertia, but it goes like <laughs> just a tiny little <laughs> <subtle. laughs> and he's like well, no, God, you did it on the first try. Well, that's oh, super impressive right there. He's like, well, you can have your pick if any one of these sort of stuffed animals that we got over here. Again, I highly recommend the Red Panda. Those are going to go by real fast. Um, Voth, what, what would you like? Oh my goodness. Definitely a snake, so I could wear it like a boa. It's very stylish nowadays, isn't it? I, I was thinking of a snake as well. A snake for my sister, good sir. <laughs> Alright, well, we got a few different kinds, but my favorite kind is this one with the two eyes. <laughs> I, I really prefer my snakes that have one eye. One? Alright, I mean, then, you know, buy beware, I suppose. Here's your, here's your snake. Here you go, sister. A one-eyed snake to wear I feel like I just missed a joke. Maybe. I don't, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. As if I couldn't look sillier in this place. Thanks, Ecto. Thank you, sir. Voss, did you did you want to try this game as well? Um, not this one, I think. Alright. I'll try the cup game. The cup one. Alright. Thank you, good sir. Have fun right. with your red pandas. 
So you uh, approach the table with the guy with the cups, and he and he's like, "Oh, would you care to dress your luck here?" <laughs> Always. Ah, you must be quick here, eyes and your mind at the same time. It's a little much for most people, but we'll see what we can do. And then he's like, "That would just be mm, ten coppers for you." Hmm, it's a little expensive. I mean, the strength one was only five. Yes, but that requires the exhaustion of the body. This one's more for the mind, and you could be the educated ones. So, we assume that you have a little more couple to push around. I know, then the prize better be equally better than the other. Oh, well, the prize is wonderful. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> and then he kind of. He's like, eh? Uh, and then he put <laughs> reaches out. Apparently, you can kind of tell, like, uh, you can kind of tell that he wasn't actually prepared for anyone to even have the chance of winning this one. <laughs> <laughs> he reaches back and he's like, um, I have this boot. It's a very, it's quite a stylish boot. You can see the uh, laces are inlaid with gold twine. It's very impressive. Where's the other boot? <sighs> and then he reaches down, takes off his other boot, and puts it <laughs> on the table. <laughs> Oh, That's okay. fine. Both boots. As if it matters. <laughs> oh, I will happily pay you ten gold just for the inconvenience of taking off your shoes for my enjoyment. Oh, right. Ten copper, rather. Did I say copper? Definitely not gold. <sighs> Alright, so he begins to, uh, he has this, uh, small, uh, die that has many sides. Who knows how many? And he put, places it under a cup and begins to shovel it back, lifting up the cup for a second, putting it back down, moving it back and forth. <laughs> Really quickly, uh, roll me a perception check. All right, you got it. Lol, you don't got this. <laughs> All right, he moves really quack- quickly, and you're following along. And you can, and you can tell, like, uh, oh, and then you can tell that the one under his left hand is definitely where he left the dice. Sweet, I'm definitely pointing at that one. All right, and he he sees your point. He's like, are you sure about that one? Sure. Yes, I'm definitely sure. sure. Pardon what? Are you sure, sister? Yeah, I'm, sh- I'm definitely sure. I saw it go there, yeah. And then he's like, very well, we shall see. And then he lifts up the cup, and there's nothing there. What? <laughs> <clears throat> and I don't, then I'm just going to lift up both cups that remain. <laughs> All of them? Both, yeah, the other two. And there was nothing there. <gasps> Sir! Vile betrayer! Calm down, calm down, calm down. Look, I never said that the, the dice would absolutely be under a cup. I just said you have to tell me where it is. In your pocket, then. <laughs> Can I? He said he's a gnome or a halfling. Don't he does sound like one, so yes. <laughs> Can I, like, pick him up by the ankle? Oh, uh, this guy out. Sure. Uh, give me a, uh, well, we'll give, he's gonna try to duck out of your grasp here. Ah! Uh, but just do a, uh, this is a dex check. We'll grab, grab, well, athletics. Your choice of athletics or acrobatics. We'll do that. Well, good thing I'm proficient. Maybe not. (laughs) Ooh, he just sneaks out of your grasp. (sighs) I demand you give my sister her money back. He's like, help, help! And he he runs off into the uh, streets. Do um, I take leave his boots? his boots on the table? Yeah, I take his boots. He does leave his boots on the table. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, sister, you still won your prize. Fair so, and square, I say. You can add two Excellent. really, really small boots. <laughs> <laughs> I've got children's boots. Children's <laughs> boots. Um... <laughs> You, as he runs by, you see like a couple city guards see him running, and they're they're like, <laughs> this barefoot gnome. This, this, this barefoot gnome has a bit of a reputation, and they don't feel sorry for him. <laughs> bye, boy, bye, <laughs> boy, bye. All right, uh, Clista, we have audio. Oh, <gasps> I know that feel. Can't hear us at all. <laughs> Lindsay, how do you fix it? You... oh! Alright. Well, while we were uh, working on those technical difficulties, did anyone want to do anything else? 
Find more wine. This Find more wine. Is empty. Oh, Are the cookie legs ready yet? Uh, uh, you ask the the gentleman who's right there, which, who is a uh, a wood elf. Uh, it kind of looks like a teenager, like he's running his parents' stand. Um, he's like, uh, I I think so. Uh, I mean, this one looks like it's almost ready. I, I don't know if I should give it to you quite yet. I mean, it might be, make you go sick. Uh, I suppose I can wait about six more seconds. Uh, okay. Come on. So for roughly six more seconds, he turns to Turkey Lady and says, oh, I mean, it's looking better now. I mean, it's, I think it's been long enough. I mean, if you want it. Um, I would defer to your judgment. I have expertise in some things, but cooking turkey legs is not one of them. You tell me when they're ready. I mean, to be honest with you, it's not really my expertise either. I mean, my mom just wanted me to watch this for her while she goes to the... She's going to be right back real soon. Well, you're a good <laughs> lad for doing what your mom says. Oh, okay. Um, mm, well, I should be more, more confident in myself. I think this turkey leg is done. So, you, sir, you're getting a turkey leg right now. And then... Mm. He slides off the turkey leg and uh, wraps it in a bit of paper and hands it to you. All right, all right. That turkey leg. I like that confidence. This turkey leg isn't all cooked through. I'm going to come back and shank you. I mean, what? Have a good day, sir. And I flip him however much the turkey leg costs. I regret everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, cool. So... Let's see if we can get some old y'all here. Yep. Let's get Kate in here. I wanna dance. Wanna dance with somebody. <laughs> I wanna feel the heat with some not as a T flame because resistance. I was I like, also more brother and sister. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I was thinking more like you know, I can dance if I want to. It's like a member of the Lollipop Guild. <laughs> oh hey, God. Kate! That is species how's it, how's it working for you right now, Kate? Can you hear us now? Can you hear me now? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Poor Kate. Poor Kate. Poor Kate. Um, technical I difficulties. How this feel. Okay. It's so hard. Um, let's see. Oh, yes, we can. We can. We'll keep uh, the dance and suspended animation. Actually, should we? We're gonna have to wait for a certain point. Okay, we'll take we'll take a little time and see if computing helps. Uh, yeah. While we're waiting, uh, did anyone uh, want to talk about anything, either in game or out? <laughs> <laughs> My lipstick's really green, guys. It, it is, is real green. It's do called know, Alien. So again, I might have missed this while doing stream stuff, but do we know why we're here in general? Like, yes, yeah. there is a party, but... It's Prince Isaac's birthday party! Okay. All right. Yeah. I missed that part, because... Audio stuff, but... Okay. I also love how none of us said happy birthday when he was talking to us. <laughs> hey, he's walking away, he's like... Oh, that's so true. Sure. <laughs> that was it his birthday. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I'm too enthralled with my wife. And I have oh. my mouth full, so I'm like, I hope someone says it. Captain's too busy thinking how, like, outstandingly, remarkably familiar he looks. Oh. Yeah. Um, he looks so, like this guy that I just saw in a moving picture. If we're taking a second here, um, Leo the Mofo Lion is asking some questions in chat about building a character in D&D 5e. He's uh, new to the system. And uh, he rolled his stats. Apparently they... Um, uh, it was on a form that he's on, and uh, these are the roles that he got, and he was wondering which character might benefit from these roles. He can place them in any category he wants, and I went ahead and told him any class with roles that high would be yeah. excellent to have. Yeah, because yep. you just put your highest in the stat that works best for that class. Yep. So, yep. Um, yeah, especially because you're <coughs> only 11, like, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. 
no. So, I mean, you could basically have a wizard that is stronger than, you know, most people in the class at that point. Because yeah. um, you have some pretty okay. decent stats there. Yeah, I mean, and you have, when you have, like, a, a 15 and a 16, um, and a 13, you have a lot of flexibility. You can either start off with a really high primary stat if you get a race that has, like, a plus 2 in your, mm -hmm. uh, whatever your primary stat is. Um, you can get up to 18 at level 1, which is ridiculous. Um, which gives you a really then, good spell DC for any casting yeah. classes. Yeah, it's, so, uh... Yeah, you really can do almost whatever you want, um, and be effective. For sure. Um, Definitely. And then our good friend Sir Mukal Mustai, which by the way, did everyone see his wonderful rendition of Barnaby from Armello? That was pretty yeah. awesome. Um, uh, he was asking how many classes are there, and uh, there are several classes in the just in the core handbook there's quite a few classes and most classes have at least two or three subclasses then there's um, expansion material like uh, what the Sword Coast Adventurers guide that just released some other things and on top of that there's also a very very widespread homebrew kind of community that is ingrained within D&D &D. so if you find something that just like isn't quite what you want chances are with some balance you can find it and uh and either make it from scratch yourself or find something that someone else has made from scratch uh to kind of fill that niche so uh with dnd the great thing about it is the you know the possibilities are basically endless you can play what you want how you want where you want and it's it's a really really kind of fun uh you know game to sit down with some good people and and get into um, I would say, uh, for Leo, he asked if the blade lock is any good. Um, I, th if you like warlocks, um, then the blade lock is probably going to be fine. Um, uh, I've, but it seems kind of hit and miss on warlocks. The, people either really, really love them, or they, they just kind of don't really like them that much. Um, for me, with stats that are that high and that well-rounded, um, you would... You would do really well to be a, uh, to play a paladin because a paladin is one of those classes that That's you have to uh, you have to have a lot of stats that are decent in order to play a paladin really well. So with stats that are that high across the board, um, finding something like an eldritch knight fighter or a paladin would be really really good. Um, but again, with yeah. stats that high, playing any class you you you're basically going to be pretty decent at. Yup. No, we cannot hear you. Can you hear us? No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, good. Are you broadcasting voice? Or are you broadcasting nothing? <clears throat> Was I muted just a second ago? No, you're talking. Alright. All right. Um, yeah, so like I was saying, if you guys have any other, um, any other questions while we're trying to figure out these audio things, or at any point in time during the stream, feel free to, you know, go ahead and post them in there and we'll try and answer them. We got a couple moderators in and out, um, that are here as well, and we'll try and get to them as, uh, as much as you can. Um, Mad Heavy, Eldritch Knight, and Paladin are two of the, like, really mad heavy classes that take advantage of those high stats, I would say personally. I think are your two like really far end ones. Um I don't think is the Arcane Trickster pretty mad heavy? <clears throat> well, remind me what mad heavy means. <laughs> it's um, multiple ability dependence. Okay. Um I mean they're mostly just Dex and Int. I mean it helps to have con and I mean always helps to have some con and wisdom, but their primaries I, I, are intelligence and dex. I would say probably, yeah, Arcane Tertia, probably I would call that mad, just because um, I think uh, for rogues, investigation and, and perception are really important, so you, like, whiz and, and, and dex and con, kind of, so are all highly useful. Um, so, I th I'm not exactly sure, um, Lindsay might know, but with the the blade lock, the, the warlock with the blade pact or whatever it is, the pact weapon 
doesn't use strength modifier, right? Yeah, it does. It uses it does. either strength or dex, whatever it is, whatever okay, weapon so it is. It's either one. It doesn't depend on it. the The big thing with a paladin oh. is you need strength, you need charisma. Hold on. I think she meant it goes with whatever it yeah. does in the PHP. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's whichever you, whatever you summon, is what it becomes. Yeah, whatever yeah. weapon it is. Yay! 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 There for a second. Uh oh oh. Oh. Yeah, um, but with the Paladin, you, you need strength, you need constitution, you need charisma. Almost every single character really benefits from wisdom in 5e. Um, it, and so it'd be good to have a halfway decent one in that. And then um, a lot of the uh, the higher level stuff, when you get into things like dragons and, and uh, spellcasters, um, dexterity becomes really big because when they do AOE effects, nine times out of ten, it's a dexterity save. So paladins really feel that that kind of like dependency on a lot of different stats. Um, well, could use a two-handed for the blade on a blade lock. Uh, yeah, you can use almost anything on the blade lock. Um, and if you really want to play the blade lock, I say go for it. You can make some awesome warlock characters. Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. They're pretty awesome. They can be. I mean, not that I'm biased or anything. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we want to try? Uh, let's see. I don't know so how we would stream if we did it on Skype, but yeah, that's true. like at least video-wise. But mm -hmm. that's an option, I guess. I think just from the technical point of things, I'd want to do a dummy run of that. I mean, I don't want to be messing with it live on the stream. Yeah. You know? So, if we want to go that route, we'd go offline, try and figure things out. Those of you watching, stay tuned. Well, if can, you can sort it out, but... So, Kate, you're, you're having, she's having issues just getting in at all? That's what it seems like. Okay. Hmm. Um, warlocks, uh, generally speaking, don't necessarily need to have uh, a high strength, um, especially like even uh, blade, uh, like blade pack warlocks. They can use like a uh, a rapier as their pl their packed weapon, and it can be a, it's a finesse weapon. So it depends on dexterity instead of strength to make their attacks and their damage rolls. So um, because dexterity can be used for their attack and damage rolls and for their armor, because uh, most times you're getting only up to medium armor, is it? Or can they only get light armor? Yeah, I think warlocks are only proficient in light. Light, yeah. but isn't one of the packs, doesn't it give you medium armor? Uh -huh. No? Nope. Okay, so they only get light armor, which um, dexterity stacks really well with to make your AC higher. So really intelligence and uh, strength are like their low ball stats most of the time. Um, you can get away a little bit with not having high wisdom on a warlock, but again, wisdom is one of those stats that kind of covers a lot of like perception rolls and, and things like that. Um, but if you're going to make a warlock that's going to be in the middle of it kind of fighting, um, you, you want high constitution, you want high AC, which you can achieve with dex. Um, and then um, charisma obviously is your spell casting stat, so you want that high. Uh, and those would be like your three main ones if you're in the middle of it as a warlock. Yeah, I think what's most important to remember with a pact of blade warlock is you're not going to be the best melee fighter probably, and you're not going to be the best caster either. So if you're happy with being like more of a support, kind of a control the battlefield kind of a character, then I think pact of blade is really good for that. But you're not going to be like the best at anything. So you know. So I think we're talking about doing Skype. Um. Well, it would be kind of so like we, we gotta either figure it out like really fast or reschedule at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Well, can we try and do Skype? Mute our mics and roll twenty and leave the cameras up. Hmm. 
Yeah, we'll try that. Will that work? Sinking, sinking might be rough, but I mean, I can't, it's fine. Are you guys alright with that? To just try and push through it? I, I mean, we yeah, got some people in chat. Mm -hmm. I personally love Paladins. Mm, I'm just trying to figure out how we to go about doing that on this desktop. Um, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> That's a lot for um, Alex's computer to have to deal with too. Between yeah. Between Roll yeah. Twenty, OBS, Skype. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, if we're gonna do it, it would probably be best if someone else hosted the call. But then it won't be on OBS. It'll be coming through his speakers. Oh. Uh, yeah, let me set that up. And then I need to uh, switch headphones. No, um, and as a matter of fact, the character I'm playing tonight, Virgil, is a chaotic neutral paladin. So, um, there's no steadfast rule. Uh, 5e, one of the big things that it did is kind of step away from a lot of the um, things that you have to do and kind of put it more in the hands of the players and the GM to make the game that they want. Mm -hmm. All right.